This episode is about horny animals. Also like peacocks and stuff. Hey there, Domesticated Wildlife, Trace here for D News. With Christmas just around the corner, it's time to take a look at one of the most famous mythical creatures in Christmas lore. No, not Yukon Cornelius, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Although it's not Rudolph's nose we're thinking about, but Rudolph's antlers. Reindeer shed their antlers every year. They're thought to do this because at a certain size, the antlers become too cumbersome to deal with. Sure, they're useful for defense sometimes, but antlers also slow the reindeer down, making them more susceptible to being attacked and keeping them from running away. And it's not just reindeer, it's not just antlers. Plenty of animals have characteristics that directly threaten their survival. For example, peacocks. Their enormous bright plumage is basically a giant, hey, here I am, come eat me, for animals like wild dogs and raccoons and even tigers. According to various theories of natural selection, that kind of trait called ornamentation should be pretty quickly wiped out. If you're a peacock that doesn't show off, you're less likely to be eaten by a predator and more likely to procreate, thus passing along your lack of plumage. Even dung beetles have excessively sized horns on their head that work, logically anyway, against their survival. But despite going against natural selection, this ornamentation actually favors something called sexual selection. These bright and flashy or large and antlery extras are thought to help males of species stand out and attract females. Which is pretty interesting, because if females prefer mates with ornamentation, then their offspring might also have both ornamentation and a preference for it among the females in an ongoing sort of feedback loop. This is called a Fisherian runaway or runaway selection, where the female's preference for a specific trait, in this case ornamentation, is strong enough that it propagates itself through subsequent generations, leading to a runaway of that particular trait. This theory helps explain why a trait that would seem detrimental logically might stick around when natural selection would seemingly want to phase it out. But why would females prefer a mate that might be more likely to be killed? One theory called the handicap principle suggests that if your ornamentation doesn't get you killed by the time you're sexually mature, then you're probably a strong member of the species. For example, if you survive into adulthood with your antlers intact, it shows you're more fit than deer with antlers who couldn't run fast enough to escape death. But it's still kind of a recipe for disaster if you think about it. What if your species doesn't have a lot of mates to choose from and all the ornamented males get killed just because there was this evolutionary imperative to show off? Now you're extinct. Well, researchers from Northwestern University found that many ornamental animals do split into two distinct subspecies on the basis of how likely they are to survive with ornaments. So in order to resolve the conflict of sexual selection versus natural selection, animals simply evolved in both directions. Some subspecies would follow the sexual model and have crazy big antlers or feathers or horns, while others would develop tiny antlers, feathers and horns, and they would live long enough to procreate. And what's fascinating is that there's almost nothing in between. There are very few species with medium-sized ornaments. So to bring all of this back to Rudolph, unlike most species of deer, both male and female reindeer grow antlers and they shed them every year. But males, they usually shed them around wintertime. Whereas females, they shed them around the summer, give or take a few months for both. So if Rudolph had antlers around December 25th, then it's most likely Rudolph was a lady. Keep that in mind while watching the TV special. It'll change your perspective. So now that you know some fun facts about reindeer, how much do you know about mistletoe? Check out this video right here of seven things you probably didn't know about it. What do you guys think? Do you have any other Christmas myths that you want us to bust? Let us know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you next time.